Welcome to Reality Scoop. Please, can you take the time to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and the like button. It's free for you, but means the world to us. Thank you. Now on with our video. Meet our protagonist, Oliver, a young bookish chap from the heart of London. His existence is woven into the fabric of the city's oldest library, where he spends his days lost in the labyrinth of literature. He's a guardian of stories, a curator of history. Oliver's life follows a rhythm as predictable as the ticking of a grandfather clock, a routine as comfortable as an old dog-eared book. He wakes at the break of dawn, the city's heartbeat his morning symphony. His day unfolds in the quiet hush of the library, amidst the rustle of pages and the whispers of old tales. Evenings find him immersed in his own collection of books at home, each one a window into another world. Yet, his life may seem ordinary, uneventful even. But don't be deceived, for when the city sleeps and Oliver retreats into the realm of dreams, his world is anything but mundane. But as night falls, Oliver's world takes a dramatic turn. As Oliver drifts into sleep, the first nightmare begins. He finds himself standing in the heart of a grand medieval castle, its stone walls echoing with the clatter of swords and the harsh clang of armor. Suddenly, he's pursued by a horde of faceless knights, their empty visors staring at him with an unspoken menace. The castle's labyrinthine hallways twist and turn, leading him deeper into the heart of his fear. His pulse races, his breaths come in shallow gasps, the cold dread of the chase seeping into his bones. Yet amidst the terror, a part of him recognizes the unreality of it all. This is a dream, he reminds himself, just a bad dream. He wakes up, his skin slick with sweat, his heart still pounding in his chest. But he brushes it aside, attributing the dread and the perspiration to a mere nightmare, a figment of his overactive imagination. The next night, sleep does not come easily for Oliver. His heart beats in a rhythm of dread, the memory of the previous night's horrors still haunting his thoughts. Yet the siren call of sleep is relentless, and eventually he succumbs. In the depths of his slumber, Oliver finds himself standing before a grand mansion. Its gothic architecture looms ominously against the moonlit sky, an eerie stillness hanging heavy in the air. He steps forward, the gravel crunching beneath his feet echoing into the night. Inside, the mansion is a labyrinth of shadowy corridors and decrepit rooms, each one more chilling than the last. Dusty portraits of stern-faced aristocrats stare down from the walls, their eyes seeming to follow Oliver as he moves. The air is thick with an ancient sadness, a melancholy that seeps into his soul. The whispers start softly, a susurrus of voices that seem to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. They grow louder, their tone more urgent, yet their words remain an indecipherable tangle. The whispers become a chorus of ghostly voices, their spectral tongues weaving a symphony of terror that reverberates through the mansion. Suddenly, apparitions begin to materialize, they are spectral figures, their forms flickering like candlelight, their faces etched with pain and despair. They reach out to Oliver, their ghostly hands passing through him, leaving a chilling numbness in their wake. The horror intensifies, the whispers crescendo into a deafening roar, the apparitions become more numerous, their suffering more palpable. The mansion becomes a theater of terror, each room a stage for the ghostly performances of its tragic inhabitants. Oliver's heart pounds in his chest, a relentless drum echoing the rhythm of his fear. He tries to run, but the mansion's labyrinthine corridors twist and turn, leading him deeper into its haunted heart. Just when the terror seems unbearable, Oliver's eyes snap open. He finds himself back in his bed, the echoes of the ghostly whispers still ringing in his ears. He gasps awake, heart pounding, the whispers still echoing in his ears. His hand is icy cold, a chilling reminder of the spectral hands that had touched him in his nightmare. The line between dream and reality blurs, leaving Oliver in a state of bewildering terror. Haunted by fear, Oliver dreads the coming of the night. And as the darkness swallows the last rays of the sun, he finds himself once again in the clutches of a dream, or rather, a nightmare. This time, he's not in his cozy bed, but standing in the heart of a labyrinth a maze of catacombs stretching out into an endless black abyss. The air smells of damp earth and decay, a chilling reminder of the tomb-like surroundings. The silence is oppressive, broken only by the distant echo of his own heartbeat. Suddenly, he hears a shuffle, a soft sigh, like something not of this world breathing. 
he turns around, and there they are. The undead. Their eyes are hollow, their bodies decayed, yet they move with a horrifying grace. They close in on him, their ghostly whispers echoing within the stone walls, their cold, lifeless hands reaching out for him. Oliver tries to run, but the catacombs twist and turn, leading him deeper into this nightmare. The undead are always behind him, their whispers growing louder, their hands reaching closer. The terror is almost unbearable. His heart pounds in his chest, his breath comes in short gasps, and the cold sweat trickles down his spine. The labyrinth seems to be alive, shifting and morphing, the walls closing in, the ceiling lowering. It's as though the catacombs are closing in, trying to swallow him whole. He can feel the cold stone against his skin, the chill seeping into his bones. The whispers of the undead grow louder, their hands almost touching him. And then, just as he feels the cold fingers of the undead on his skin, he wakes up. He's back in his room, the familiar surroundings offering a fleeting sense of relief. But the terror lingers, the cold sweat soaking his sheets, his heart still racing. As he looks down, he sees something that makes his blood run cold. There, on his hand, is a symbol. A cryptic symbol etched into his skin. A chilling souvenir from his nightmare. Awakening in a cold sweat, he discovers a cryptic symbol etched on his hand. In the grip of terror, Oliver falls into a fitful sleep. His eyelids flutter shut, and he plunges once more into the abyss of his subconscious. This time, he finds himself in a desolate wasteland. A landscape devoid of life, a tableau of desolation that stretches out to infinity. It's a place where the sun never rises, and the moon never sets. It's a realm of endless twilight, a kingdom of shadows. The low hum of silence is broken by the sound of his own heartbeat, echoing in the void. His heart pounds like a drum, each beat a reminder of his vulnerability, his isolation. Every crackle of a twig, every rustle of the wind, sends a shiver down his spine. It's as if the very air is alive, watching him, waiting to strike. Suddenly, monstrous creatures begin to emerge from the shadows. Twisted and grotesque, they are the manifestation of every fear Oliver has ever known. They are the embodiment of his anxieties, his insecurities, his darkest thoughts. They are not beasts of flesh and bone, but of fear and dread. They are the monsters within us, the ones we carry in the deepest recesses of our minds. The chase begins. He runs, but the creatures are relentless. They are always just a step behind, their monstrous roars filling the air. The terror is palpable, so intense that it blurs the line between reality and nightmare. The fear is so real, so raw, that it threatens to consume him. He can feel their hot breath on his neck, their claws reaching out for him. In the midst of this terror, something strange happens. Oliver's hand brushes against something solid, something real. It's a small object, cold and hard. He clings to it, a lifeline in this sea of horror. Oliver wakes, screaming, clutching a handful of ashes from his dream. His heart is thundering in his chest, his body drenched in sweat. As he opens his eyes, he looks down at his hand. The ashes slip through his fingers, a chilling reminder of the nightmare that was all too real. As dawn breaks, Oliver awakens from his horrifying journey. The once familiar confines of his bedroom now seem alien and menacing, tainted by the residual terror of his nightmarish dreams. His heart is pounding like a war drum in his chest, and his breath is coming in short, ragged gasps, a testament to the intensity of the fear that courses through his veins. His trembling hand rises to wipe the cold sweat off his brow, but his eyes are drawn to a strange marking on his palm. It's a symbol, etched into his skin like a burn, a cryptic testament of his nocturnal ordeal, it's as chilling as it is puzzling, an echo from the depths of his dreams that has somehow crossed the threshold into reality. Beside him on the bed, a pile of ashes lay scattered, a ghostly residue brought back from the nightmarish realms he traversed in his sleep. The ashes are cold to the touch, their lifeless grey a stark contrast against the vibrant colours of his dreams. What could they possibly mean? Could it be that his dreams were not just figments of his imagination, but a portal into another realm. A shudder of dread runs down his spine as the implications sink in. He's a rational man, a physicist by trade, yet the evidence is right there, etched into his skin and scattered on his bed sheets. He's left to grapple with the terrifying notion that his dreams might be more than just subconscious fantasies. 
They could be real, tangible, and potentially deadly. The day ahead is filled with uncertainty. The sun may be up, but the shadows of his nightmares still linger, casting a pall over the bright morning. His mind races with questions, each more unsettling than the last, as he struggles to reconcile his scientific understanding of the world with the surreal horrors he's just experienced. In the cold light of day, Oliver is left to wonder. Are these mere nightmares or ominous portents of what's to come? I hope you enjoyed the video. We at Reality Scoop enjoyed making it for you. Please give this video a thumbs up as this really does help us out a lot. Also if you like our content please consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell to be made aware of our next upload. By subscribing to the channel it really does help us out, plus it's free for you to do. Thank you and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye for now.